Tens of thousands of people came to TwitchCon this weekend. I'll have more on the convention coming up next. If you'd like to see how some San Jose residents are remembering their loved ones for Dia de los Muertos, I'll have more on that story coming up. The San Jose community is standing in solidarity to remember those lost in the Tree of Life synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh. I'll have more on that next on Update News. From the School of Journalism and Mass Communications at San Jose State University, your source for what's happening with a fresh perspective on today's issues. You're watching Update News. Welcome to Update News. I'm Viviana de la Peña. And I'm Luke Johnson. Many people are still mourning over the shooting that killed several Jewish worshipers in a Pittsburgh synagogue. Like many communities across the country, students at San Jose State joined together to shine a light on the lives that were lost. Mauricio LaPlante is on camp live on campus with more. Viviana, the Jewish community here in San Jose is hoping to remember the people who died in Pittsburgh. They're joining with others to make sure to stop the hate that fueled this violence. This is why it is so powerful to join together in solidarity. It's still a struggle to process. I feel like I, I want to cry, but I haven't been able to yet. Days after a shooting took the lives of 11 people in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, students joined together for a vigil at San Jose State University. I'd like to sound the shofar. The night was dedicated to those lost. I want to sound it tonight 11 times. The 11 Jewish men and women that died. But speakers at the event urge those listening to move forward. Rose Mallinger. They want to remember the people who died in Pittsburgh's Tree of Life synagogue and fight the anti-Semitism behind the violence. It's really shocking to me that that one person can have such a huge hatred for one group of people. The crowd sang in unison to honor those lost and read something about each one of the dead in order to never forget their stories. Brothers Cecil and David Rosenthal had a love for life. I think it's the right thing to do, to, you know, to celebrate their life, and it's not wrong to pray for them and their families. Some read along to uphold their faith, and others to ally themselves with the Jewish community. Standing together is much more powerful than being separated. And while the answers on how to recover may be unclear, I don't know what I can do to really move on, but uh, just keep talking about it with my friends. Community members say they'll continue counseling each other and standing up against hate. And the organizers of the event hope that this vigil can help align others outside of the Jewish religion to join together and stop gun violence and hate. Bibiana? When Anita Hill testified in front of Congress, accusing Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas of sexual harassment, few imagined that it would have ever happen again. Hill spoke to the YWCA this week about the change she saw since her testimony, nearly 30 years ago. Kula Mehta has a story. The parallels are striking. Professor Anita Hill accused then Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas of sexual harassment. And in a repeat of history, last month, Professor Christine Blasey Ford accused then nominee Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault. Both testified in front of Congress. And for many, the question was whether they could be believed. This week at the YWCA's Inspire Luncheon, Hill said things are different. Definitely here to see Anita Hill speak. Um, I mean, seeing how kind of what happened to her literally just happened again in history. Hill directly responded to senators who proclaimed that Kavanaugh was innocent until proven guilty, explaining that it's the standard for criminal proceedings, not political ones. And no one has a right to sit on the Supreme Court. Hill said, 30 years ago at this luncheon, if we would have talked of sexual harassment, many of you wouldn't know what we were talking about. I think there's, there's progress, but it's far too slow, in my opinion. I think, you know, statistics show that 
it would take a hundred years for us to get to a point of equality unless something dramatic changes. Dr. Hill gave the audience three different areas in which they can improve. And one of those was ending the problematic practices of NDAs and mandatory arbitration agreements, which make it harder for women to get justice for sexual assaults. I think my, I needed to hear what she was saying. Given um, the field that I work in and counseling and stuff, I was becoming a little bit complacent. And I realized it after she spoke. Despite the hardship it caused her, Hill said if she had to go through her ordeal again, she would. In Santa Clara, Canal Meta, Update News. Some San Jose State students are trying to bring awareness of climate change to campus. They're lending their support to a youth movement hundreds of miles away. Lavetta Jackson has more on the story. These two SJSU students are trying to get the word out about the efforts to save the environment. 21 Oregon students are suing the federal government and President Trump, saying they don't believe the government is doing anything to stop global warming. The peaceful protest is held near Clark Hall. Protest leaders are giving other students information on our climate crisis. Climate change is real. Florida is basically sinking, and it's important that we hold accountable, accountable our officials who are in charge to protect us. The case, which was filed three years ago, was supposed to go to trial this week, but the Supreme Court halted it, citing a writ of mandamus. In other words, the courts won't put an emergency measure into effect. They really are the ones that will be affected by all the changes that we're, that we're creating with our impacts now. Environmentalist Nitsa Marquez has a goal to get students to respond to what climate change means to them. Getting the attention of students to sign her petition was a challenge, but she eventually got to many people. Um, so it's not just, you know, when, until you're older or you have a career that you can make changes, we can do it now. And I feel like that's something very important that everyone should realize. The Oregon students have been waiting since 2015 for their voice to be heard and will continue to wait even longer. Marquez will continue to inform students on the importance of the global climate. In San Jose, Lavetta Jackson, Update News. The homeless in San Jose can now apply for a new job. They will be paid $15 an hour to clean litter hotspots in the city. William Lapp is, is live in the newsroom with the story. William, what exactly are litter hotspots? Viviana, litter hotspots are places where a, lo where, a lot of place where a lot of trash has collected. The city of San Jose has a map that marks the problem locations. In two weeks, more than two dozen homeless residents will work on cleaning up the mess. In a city with more than a million people, <laughs> trash doesn't always reach a landfill, but a new program announced last week will employ the homeless to clean dirty San Jose streets. San Jose resident Deborah Haas has lived in the city for 40 years and is in favor of the program. Well, it would help get the mess cleaned up and give them something to do besides just sit there and <laughs> vegetate or whatever, you know. The program will start by employing 25 homeless people to clean litter hotspots around San Jose. They'll work four days a week to beautify the city, guided by Goodwill and Downtown Streets team. Downtown Streets team's goal is to end homelessness through the dignity of work. And we don't think there's anything undignified about being homeless, but a lot of times uh, people are looked down upon and they feel that way when they're on the street. Details for the new program are still being ironed out. Although it doesn't even have a name yet, the city of San Jose will be funding most of the project. Mayor Sam LaCardo had the idea for the program and began developing it in September. Working with senior policy advisor Paul Pereira, LaCardo created the program to improve the city's quality of living. We want to change the narrative so people aren't just saying that the problem is coming from homeless encampments, but that homeless people are also part of the solution. And at the same time, we're getting them a job. This program is meant to be a stepping stone towards a higher paying job for the homeless. If it's successful, the program will expand next year to include more people. The estimated time for the program to start is November 12th. Live in the, live in the newsroom, I'm William Yap, Update News. A road around campus is causing new congestion and confusion. It's happening right here on East San Fernando Street, just outside MLK Library. A new bike lane was added. This pushed the parking lane out into the middle of the road. Now some drivers and walkers are having a hard time figuring out the lanes and cars. Because you don't know, you can't really distinguish from the parked ones, from the moving ones at night. It's like, I leave late too. City workers put up signs to help tell people where to bike and where to park. The designated bikeway is part of San Jose's new Better Bike Ways project. Daylight saving ends this Sunday. Most of the country participates in the time adjustment, but there is a proposition in the upcoming election that could exclude California from it in the future. 
Kelsey Valle has the story. Daylight saving. People lose an hour of their sleep when it begins in March and gain an extra hour when it ends in November. But Proposition 7 on the general election ballot wants to exclude California from the biannual time change. The prop, co-authored by Assemblyman Kansan Chu, suggests that California stay on daylight saving time all year long. I, I don't think it will create any confusing, but it, it probably will help California um, uh, doing business in, in, in the Asian countries as well. Research shows an increase in heart complications and traffic accidents when clocks are switched forward in the spring. Most of the country participates in the time change. The concept originated during World War II to save energy with more daylight. Permanent daylight saving would change California's time relationship with neighboring states. I think it's dumb. Like. Time changes, it's inevitable. Like We have to go on with, like, with the rest of the world. If not, we're just going to be behind. Prop 7 opponents say children and adults would always endure their morning commute in the dark. And some of the supporting arguments for the prop are that it will lower health risks, reduce energy consumption, and thus save people money. But the new change wouldn't come that easy. If Californians approve the prop, it would still have to get state legislative and federal approval. Federally, I don't think it would, it would pass anyways. Like, I think California is going to stay the way it is. At least for the time being, California will still spring forward and fall back. On campus, Kelsey Valle, Update News. With midterm elections right around the corner, the effort to get students to vote is in full swing. A conversation between local elected officials on campus Thursday discussed the power of the student vote. Nayeli Lopez has more on the story. Like last-minute cramming for an exam, San Jose State students are learning all they can about issues up for vote in next Tuesday's election. This forum on Thursday included opening remarks from San Jose Mayor Sam Licardo and former Assembly member Fred Keeley, Associated Students President Ariadna Manzo, Assembly member Ash Kalra, Martha Beatty from the League of Women Voters, and Council member Lan Diep. Voter turnout at recent elections has been at its lowest. In order to turn that around for Tuesday's election, the focus in the discussion at the forum was focused on measures that are going to make students want to come out and vote. Mayor Licardo spoke against Measure B, saying it would weaken affordable housing rules. After the forum, a community fair offered further discussion. Especially these measures T and V uh, that will add more money to, for affordable housing within the city of San Jose and will add more money uh, for infrastructure and road improvements into the city of San Jose. A uh, recent NBC poll came out saying that a third of all millennials, that's the 18 to 35 age group, have confirmed that they will be voting in this election. The student voice was present at the forum through tweeting questions. Students should take the time to really learn about those different propositions, and then of course there's different candidates up for re-election. Only about 50 students showed up for the forum, but come Tuesday, chances are others may be sorry they missed the pre-election study session. On campus, Nayeli Lopez, Update News. When we come back, Kunal Mehta will be here with a look at arts and entertainment. The Twitch convention draws large crowds to San Jose. Celebration of the other Los Muertos continues. Now we have Kunal Mehta with A&E. So Kunal, I heard that TwitchCon was over the weekend. What video games do you like to watch? I really like watching people play Tetris. It's a simple game, but incredibly fun. San Jose is one of the hearts of the gaming industry. Twitch, a San Francisco-based streaming platform, hosted its annual TwitchCon at the San Jose Convention Center this weekend. Jonas Elam shows us more. Gamers hold frequent events to meet each other and learn the latest in the industry. Twitch held its fourth annual convention this year at the San Jose Convention Center. Last year, more than 50,000 people attended, but Twitch has not announced the attendance for this year yet. Twitch has more than 2.2 million monthly broadcasters. 
far surpassing competitors like Smashcast and YouTube Gaming. Streamers and viewers from around the world come to TwitchCon every year to see each other in real life rather than behind the keyboard. But not every guest was a convention veteran. So this being my very first like actual convention, it was a very nice experience, very real unknown experience to me to figure out what's going on, who I'm going to meet, how I'm going to meet them. The most important part of the convention was the gaming, whether it was tabletop, PC, virtual reality, or arcade. Spectators could also watch their favorite players play and their favorite casters cast live games. Twitch offered services to help expand people's brands, and many guests were there for business reasons. It's also a lot of fun uh, just to come here and actually just meet um, some of the people there to, to network. You know, that's, that's a large reason why I'm here, to network with some of the smaller streamers there, some of the bigger ones as well. Dozens of companies were in the event's expo hall showing off new technology and other products. Non-tech companies used gaming to sell their products. There was also live music and tons of art. Twitch gave 25 lucky SJSU gamers free tickets. I'm having a great time at Twitch. I'm really glad I got a free ticket from, from these guys. I think I love seeing my favorite streamers out here. TwitchCon is typically in Southern California, so locals may have to travel to go next year. In San Jose, Jonas Elam, Update News. At TwitchCon, a group is making video games more accessible to those with disabilities. The organization is called Able Gamers. Alex Martinet introduces us to a family that has benefited from the program. Able Gamers works directly with developers to make games more accessible with those with disabilities. In this year's version of Call of Duty, the developers were advised to have larger subtitles and colorblind options. The goal for Able Gamers is to make it so everyone can play. We work with game developers to give feedback, so if a deaf gamer needs subtitles, we work with game developers and explain why they're important and what sizes they need to be and things along those lines. At PAX East, Ronnie Dabianca discovered Able Gamers. Dabianca's brother grew up physically disabled and one of the ways he bonded with his brother was playing video games. In honor of his brother's passing in 2014, Dabianca volunteers for the group. I hold a 24-hour charity event on Twitch in honor of my brother to help raise money f for them. I've done it for the last four years. This year, Microsoft released an adaptive controller, making it easier for developers to implement accessibility options. For Dalbianco, it is a step in the right direction. Not everybody knows somebody with some sort of disability, and they can now go and tell them about it, and hopefully we can reach more and more people. At their Sears convention, 10 charitable organizations have helped raise $120,000. In San Jose, Alex Martinet, update news. New art installations are spreading love and laughter downtown. You might have seen them. A 12-foot tall metal XO stands outside of City Hall, and a sculpture, haha, -ha, sits outside the Hammer Theater. I think it was pretty cool that they had that. Um, it was getting kind of plain outside, and when they put that in, a lot of people started noticing it, and um, now it just makes it look more interesting outside. Although the art pieces light up blue and pink at night, they're not attracting as much attention as last year's Sonic Runway, but you can find them on display until March. Feelings of grief and celebration were felt simultaneously by San Jose residents during Dia de los Muertos. Last weekend, residents paid respects to their loved ones who have passed away but they dealt with the grief with hip-shaking dance moves and festivities. Jose Francisco Govea has more on the story. Classic vibrant Mexican colors light in the Mexican Heritage Plaza during a Dia de los Muertos event named La Ultima Parada, which translates to The Last Stop. Outside of the building, hundreds of people scanned through handcrafted jewelry and enjoyed music performances by local bands. For 20 years, the event has been held at the Mexican Heritage Plaza in San Jose. This year, it happened to be held over the weekend leading to Halloween. It's been this like hubbub of cultura and safe space for folks who are like resisting the gentrification, for folks who are being pushed out. Once entering the main floor of the event, consecutively built altars exhibited creatively made sculptures, religious figures, and photos of deceased family members, showing the generations of people honoring this tradition. Besides face paintings and skulls, Dia de los Muertos and Halloween are actually very different. For Dia de los Muertos, death is actually not something very taboo or scary. Los Mexicanos festejamos mucho 
Mexicans celebrate death a lot and we treat it lightheartedly. That's why we now have costumes of Catrinas and now have the motivation to use skulls. The layered colors and centerpieces on the altars have a deeper meaning than just setting aesthetically pleasing pieces. Each centerpiece and delicacy for displayed is an offer for the person you're remembering. It's remembering that we're temporarily here physically, but spiritually we're preserved by our loved ones. People ended the night with cumbia dancing in a joyous spirit. From San Jose, Jose Francisco Govea, Update News. And that does it for arts and entertainment. So, have you ever attended a Dia de los Muertos celebration? I actually have. It's actually a really nice to get a taste of the culture. Certainly, I've been many times. When we come back, Nayeli Lopez will be here with sports. It's still early in the hockey season, and the Sharks are currently struggling. Women's soccer is on a roll. We'll take, a, we'll take you to a tournament. Update news will be back in a bit. Now we have Nayeli Lopez with sports. Hey Nayeli, how are our hometown Sharks doing? So the next story actually gives us a look about the team's um, improvements. We're over a month into the NHL season. The high expectations for this Sharks team, San Jose has had subpar seasons so far. With 13 games in, Thomas Soares reports on how the team is doing. The San Jose Sharks alternate captain Joe Thornton is back on the ice after missing three weeks due to complications from his knee surgery. Oh, the knee feels great. It's just, you know, timing and in the long time. Thornton is currently on the top line with captain Joe Pavelski and Timo Meyer. Meyer is on fire. His nine goals lead the team. You know, he's driving his legs, he's shooting the puck real good, and, you know, he's just a confident, confident player right now. The Sharks have faced some adversity and tough matchups so far this season, including losses in both their games against the New York Rangers. We've definitely had some moments where we played really, really well. Um, you know, still obviously early in the season and got some new players coming in. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's a good start, good stuff to build off of, and um, we'll just keep trying to get better here. Goaltender Martin Jones has given up more goals than usual this early into the season. However, scoring has increased throughout the league. Analysts point to the new rule changes for the 2018 season that have made goalies wear smaller pads, giving them less surface area for blocking shots. I don't think that stuff affects Jonesy. I think he goes out and does his thing. Their ability to outperform their opponents by getting pucks to the net more frequently is a sign that the Sharks are better and their wins and losses so far. We're, we're, we're growing our game like every other team in this league is, every day, every week, trying to get a little bit better. Despite their middling record, the team is consistently doing the important things that point to potential success for the rest of the season. In San Jose, Thomas Soares, Update News. The Mountain West Co Conference Tournament opened this week and SJSU kicked off by facing Fresno State. Spartans women's soccer entered Tuesday with one thing in mind, win or go home. Luke Johnson has the game recap. The Spartans are the number four seed in the Mountain West tournament, so they need to win three matches in five days to claim the championship. They are familiar with the Bulldogs. The two teams met four days prior to the contest, ending in a 0-0 draw. In fact, the last three matches of the Spartans have resulted in scoreless ties. Volley from out top. But that quickly changes as Christian Amariqua finds the back of the net less than 13 minutes into the match. It's goal in the Spart just two days before, she had been named first team All-Mountain West. I just remember Matt, Hannah Matthews getting a touch on the ball. I was able to stay on sides with a girl on me, turn, saw the keeper, and just thought, place it where she's not. <laughs> and I touched it faster. 
Fresno State answers abruptly with a goal by Robin McCarthy at the 15-minute mark. It's in, it takes a deflection. The score remains tied at one through the first half. After a 50-minute stalemate, the leading scorer of the Spartans, Jamil X. Becerra, splits two defenders to score and break the tie. And it's in! Even to give up that first goal was kind of hard for us because we're not used to that. Um, but, you know, Jamie's a special player, and when she put the goal in the back of the net, it was exciting for us. Following that goal, things get a little crazy. Fresno State goalie Nicole Thoreau whiffs, attempting to clear the ball. But the Spartans are unable to score on an empty net. And she hits the post! However, scoring wouldn't have affected the outcome because the Spartans won regardless. And she hit the upright. For this conference tournament, we are going to have to out-recover teams. So, um, you know, you got to roll out, you got to do everything right, you got to get sleep, you got to put the right food in your body, you got to hydrate. All those things are really, really important. The next match would be just two days away against Boise State. On campus, Luke Johnson, Update News. The team defeated Boise State in penalty kicks, and tomorrow they face New Mexico at 7 p.m. for the championship game. And that's all I have for sports. So will we see you guys at the game tomorrow? Uh, indeed. Yeah, definitely. And that does it for this week's edition of Update News. For all of us here, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. One of the